of you came tonight. I am going to preach a sermon tonight. Uh, and I was asked in the business meeting to start preaching sermons on things that I've never touched before. Because I really didn't see the need. But, even if we don't have the need within our congregation, there's many to do. <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about some things tonight that uh, I have taught before, but not here many times. Uh, living a life of freedom in Christ. And... One thing that I'll focus on, but remember as I'm focus, focusing on this, there's so many things, and I'll name off only a few tonight, that the devil uses against the children of God in different ways. He will sometimes tempt us to take advantage of these sins and fall away. And sometimes he will take advantage of our loved ones and break our hearts. So we're going to be talking about living a life of freedom in Christ tonight. Reasons not to drink. The Christian is commanded flat out not to do so. My study tonight is not a comprehensive scriptural study because we'd be here a couple hours just reading the scriptures. Ephesians 5.18 Do not be drunk with wine, be, speak, be filled with the Holy Spirit. One would argue there, I don't get drunk. I just drink a little bit. Makes me feel good. But I don't get drunk, so there's no problem with it. You're missing the whole verse. The verse here is, don't be drunk with wine or anything else in your mind where you're preoccupied about everything except what we're supposed to be full of, and that's the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to just be full of it. And if our hearts and our minds and our souls and our lives and our actions and our words and thoughts and dreams and everything is full of the Holy Spirit, we're not going to have time to worry about a temptation like alcohol. A Christian will claim they feel they can socially drink at least moderately. I know when to stop. I'm... I'm not, I'm not going to get drunk, but I can drink a little. It's okay to drink a little. Ephesians 5.18 will disagree with that, and I'll get to the verse in a minute. But don't be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. What is dissipation? But be filled with the Spirit. That's what you said. Well, what's this dissipation? The word drunkenness up here, drunk, comes from a, a Greek word, methuo. And it means riotous. Don't drink alcohol. Let me add to that. Don't take drugs. Don't get yourself involved in worldly things that start tearing you apart because you can't serve two masters. And before you know it, you become riotous. What is riotous? Riotous is where you lose your temper. You lose your self-control. You're not acting like a Christian. You're not thinking like a Christian. You certainly could not be this way and ask someone on the street, would you like to have a Bible study? Can you imagine that? Would you like to come to our congregation and, and hear the Word of God preached while you're like this? I don't think you'd get a bunch of people to come. Do you? Dissipation means intoxication. How does intoxication start? It starts immediately with the first drink and the first step to being drunk. You cannot, it is impossible to get fat without starting to eat. It's impossible to get drunk without starting to drink. The first drunk, the first drink is the first mistake that people make. Luke 1.15 for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. Who are we talking about? We're talking about John the Baptist. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. Well, why did you say for he, John the Baptist, will be great in the sight of the Lord? Because he was. 
And at that time he was going to be. And shall not drink wine or strong. What's that got to do with it? What difference does it make? Well, evidently it made a lot of difference. He was going to be the, the forerunner to the Savior of the world. And for some reason, God didn't want him to drink wine or intoxicating drinks or drugs of the day or anything else like that. Why would, why would God want someone to contaminate himself, to, to make his, wine, his mind riotous, out of control, and yet try to be the forerunner of our Savior Jesus Christ? That wouldn't make any sense, would it? Well, guess what? It don't make any sense for man to do that either. You know, when we when we read of Samson, one of the things he had to do, the strongest man ever, is he didn't touch alcohol either. Alcohol is not the healthiest thing you can drink. In fact, it's very unhealthy. But we want to find, as the world does, some reason why it's okay. Maybe God endorsed it some way. Commentators further explain this word methuo as a process. Now, in getting these lessons up, I have to look at strongs and binds and all kinds of other things on Greek words and Hebrew words and Aramaic words that I don't know, don't understand. But to begin to be softened in the head. In other words, you're sober-minded, you know what you're doing, you're exactly on target, and all of a sudden... You start drinking a little bit and you sort of get a little bit loose. Well, that's one reason I drink preachers because it, it loosens me up. It makes me feel good, really. Uh, Young and Haynes is where you'll find that. A commentary for the Bible. E.W. Bullinger. To grow drunk. You know how you grow as a Christian? You start as a baby in Christ and you mature as a dove. You know how you get drunk? You start with one drink and you continue till you get drunk. Thayer says, to become intoxicated. Well, I'm not intoxicated with just one drink. It's the beginning of being intoxicated. Why would we start? Folks, you don't wake up one morning as a full-blown Christian serving God with all your heart, mind, and soul and decide, you know what I'm going to do? Starting today, I'm going to be a full-blown sinner. I'm going to fall away from the Lord, and I'm going to just head straight to hell. Ain't nobody going to stop me. I don't think anybody's ever done that with a sincere heart. That doesn't make any sense, preacher. And it don't make any sense to wake up one morning and decide I'm going to start drinking. Because you see... One step in the wrong direction, now I'm headed off the path and the next step's easier and the next step's easier and before long, I am a full-blown sinner. And if I take that first drink, didn't want to, but I did, the second drink won't be quite as hard, the third and the fourth and the fifth, and before you know it, the devil owns me. We're not talking about someone that's ridiculously drunk. We're just talking about taking that first swallow. Forget it. Dissipation. The King James Version uses excess. Don't drink in excess. Well, let me say this concerning the King James Version of that. That's just like in Acts chapter 2 where it says Jesus Christ will not stay in hell. He only spent three days in hell and He came back. Jesus Christ never went to hell. He went to paradise. They used the wrong word there. That's Hades. And here, these words would probably be a lot better there instead of excess. The unsaved. The prodigality. Or wasteful. Extravagant. Recklessness. An abandoned life. One that was saved and has now fallen away. Now, it's just... It's not worth it. It's not worth flirting with the temptation of falling away. Now we're all talking about our own souls so far. This is probably the last definition that I, I will use. All these things fit better instead of just excess. Unsaved. The word Methuel expresses 
foolishness. It's form of the beginning, not an excessive end. I'm not drunk. Imagine me, your preacher, standing up here tonight and saying, I will not get drunk. Yes, I've had a few. And I'd like to study with your brother, your sister, someone you love about uh, his soul going to heaven tonight. And I'll be okay. Don't worry about it. It's easy to judge me and look at me, and that's what I want you to do. But it would be the same if it was you. In the first place, if you want to start drinking and ask your good friend to come to church, I probably won't ever get to talk to him anyway. Because I don't see why he'd come with you to church if you're drinking. Reason not to drink. I don't believe anybody in the world would argue with this except a drunk. It weakens your resolve. Your resolve is where you dig in against sin. It's hard enough to resist temptation with alcohol, and isn't that the truth, church? You know, we're tempted every day with anger and somebody pulling in front of you and them red lights that catch me on the way home. But you know, start putting alcohol in there, and I'm going to get a whole lot madder a whole lot quicker. Anybody else would. It weakens your resolve. 2 Corinthians 5.13 For what? For whether we are beside ourselves, it is unto God. Whether we are beside ourselves, it is unto God. Or whether we are sober-minded, it is for you, for you and I. Strong's, in Strong's, one of the great, greatest books ever written as far as the Greek and the, the Hebrew and all these things. Strong's, this word means, sober-minded means self-control. I'm not under the influence of intoxicants. That can be alcohol, it can be drugs, it can be anything else. And it's a funny thing that I found out. Used to, if somebody drank, they were all against drugs. If somebody was on drugs, they were all against alcohol. And today, I think we sort of joined forces. If you do one, you do the other. 2 Corinthians 5.13 For whether we are beside ourselves, it is unto God. Or whether we are sober-minded, it is for you. The word sober here is a word called so, sophronia. It means, according to Thayer, to be of sound mind. To curb one's passions. You're passionate about something worldly and you're getting away from worship service. Worship service all of a sudden is becoming not important. Attendance is not becoming important. And as a matter of fact, even when I worship, it's not that important to do it exactly like the Bible says because I feel a lot more comfortable doing it this way. It weakens my resolve. It curbs my passions to serve God. Titus 2.6 the younger men likewise exhort, warn, strongly urge to be sober-minded. Why did the Holy Spirit have to write that in there? I don't agree with it, preacher. 1 Peter 4, 7, but the, end, but the end of all things is at hand. So here's what you need to do, brothers and sisters. Be ye therefore sound mind and be sober in prayer. Imagine this. I need God's help so bad. So what I want to do is get on my knees and pray with a contrite, broken heart to my God. Through Jesus Christ, He'll carry me to the throne of God. But first, what I want to do is get me a good old drink of alcohol. Does that make any sense? When you really get to thinking about all these things and put it into your Christian walk of life, it makes no sense at all. 1 Timothy 3.11 Women in like manner must be grave. That's serious. Not slanderers, temperate, faithful in all things. Titus 1.8 Given to hospitality, a lover of good, here we go again, sober-minded, just, holy, and self-controlled, sober-minded, self-controlled, and drinking does not go together. 
That's like saying one plus one is nine and a half. It just don't go together. I want to be hospitable. I want to bring you into my home. Or I want to come into your home. I want to get to know you. I want to love you. I want to encourage you. And you encourage me. So let's be sober-minded and just and holy and self-controlled. No, don't bring your own bottle. That don't work. Now consider. First, that medical authorities say with one drink, this is what, this is not the Bible, this is medical authority, with one drink you begin to lose control. Lose control is not self-control. Lose control is not sober-minded. Lose control is one drink. The Bible establishes the process starts in a drink. Just one. Hebrews 2.15 Woe to him. Now, I've been telling you that all this is about my soul and your soul. Does it ever affect anybody else? Because sometimes when you counsel with people, they're having problems you're telling them how they're hurting themselves and it just don't get anywhere. And then all of a sudden you say, what about your kids? What about your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, somebody you love? Now you got their attention. Habakkuk 2.15 Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbor, pressing him to your bottle, even to make him drunk, that you may look on his nakedness. What we're talking about here simply is influence. Trying to reach in and grab a brother, a sister, a child of God and take them to the depths of sin with you. After all, company, company is great when you're in sin. Why did this happen? Someone lost the soundness of their mind. For most women, their inhibitions are obviously dropping at three ounces of wine? Well, no, I can drink as much as any man. Wonderful. Three ounces of wine, medically speaking, a woman starts losing her inhibitions. It starts drop she starts dropping that wall down. Biblically, biblical sobriety cannot be had by taking even one drink of alcohol. It's just senseless. Reason not to drink. Alcohol is destructive to the body. Well, I'm not listening to that. I'm not going to listen to the Bible. I'm not going to listen to the doctors. But what about my body? Okay. Alcohol is destructive to the body. There are a litany of statistics on kidney, liver, and other bodily damage that's caused from drinking alcohol. Have you ever seen someone yellow tinted? I'll tell you something. I have. And it's so it's so <coughs> strange. And you know the problem. And drinking just don't help it at all. It usually kills and at other times it creates a swift death for many. First Corinthians 6 uh, 619. If you're not convinced that alcohol is just something that people don't need to be doing. Again, let's, let's load up our minds with knowledge so that we can try to help people. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Or know you not that your body... <coughs> oh, listen here. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit dwells in here. The Holy Spirit dwells in here which is in you, which ye have from who? From God Almighty. And ye are not your own. You know, we were bought by the price of Jesus Christ's blood. He owns us as Christians. This is His temple. And ye are not your own, for ye were brought with a price. Glorify God therefore in your body. And glorify in your body when the Holy Spirit is in here, do you really want to drink alcohol? That might not be the wisest thing you've ever done. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first a drink, making me feel good, relaxing me, 
It just helps me get rid of all. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That needs to be first in our mind. Nothing else. We were put here to glorify God, brothers and sisters, through good works. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. When we destroy our body, when we destroy this body, we are actually putting our own pleasure way ahead of God in every way. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. We're children of God. We receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? Why in the world would I ever start cursing? Why would I ever start doing any kind of sin, becoming a drug addict or an alcoholic? It just really wouldn't make a lot of sense, would it? How about if something as simple as this? Can I have an uncontrolled temper? An uncontrolled tone? I slander constantly and call myself a child of God. Well, preacher, I have to fight that every day of my life. Well, let me tell you something. A drink of alcohol is not going to help you control it. It's going to help you enhance the bad stuff. Reason not to drink. It's an addictive substance. Listen to Isaiah 5.11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink. Have you ever known one that has a problem drinking and the first thing they do when they get up is they want to go get a drink? By the way, the last thing they do before they go to sleep is they want to get a drink. And what you do in between times is just go get a drink. that they may follow strong drink, that tarry late into the night till wine inflame them. Brothers and sisters, that's a sign of pure weakness, not strength. Reason not to drink, it is a poor influence. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 and 18. Therefore come out from among them and separate, says the Lord. We're to come away from the sinners. We're to come away from worldly things and be... Be special. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters like you are, church. Says the Lord Almighty, how can we be separate, separated from the world when we lower our boundaries with alcohol or drugs or anything else that affects our soul? You know, one of five kids in America, one of five kids drink because of mom and dad did. You remember the old Marlboro commercial with a guy sitting by the tree smoking a cigarette and a little boy sitting there with a pencil in his mouth? I used to do that. Have a pencil in my mouth. You want your kids to grow up to be Christians. Well, you don't want to try to be smoking in front of them because they'll smoke. You don't want to be drinking alcohol in front of them because more than likely they're going to drink alcohol. And you certainly don't want to be a drug addict in front of them because they'll be a drug addict. I mean, everybody knows that. <clears throat> Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Ye, ye, brothers and sisters of the light of the world, there's a wonderful thing being a child of God, a Christian. It's a wonderful, wonderful, precious, God-given gift. Only by our obedience and repentance can we accept it. And when we're the light of the world, everybody's eyes are on us. They're trying to find us in fault. Trying to find us in a mistake. It's like being put on stage and everybody's trying to judge you. Not listen to what you say or what you're, what you're trying to plead with them to do for God. They're trying to find fault in you. That's just the way it is. You're a light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. What difference does that make? Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on the stand and it shineth unto all that are in the house. 
We let our light shine, don't we, church? I love Christ. I'm a member of the church that Jesus Christ established in Acts chapter 2. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm so proud of it. And thankful. Thankful. Even so, let your light shine before men. And oh, we try, Lord, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I want to ask you, a simple question right here, church, after I've just read that and you're looking at it. With this in mind, can you imagine reading that, trying to explain it to someone to touch their very heartstrings as you're taking a drink of alcohol with them? Does that make any sense? Lighting up a cigarette, uh, snorting a little cocaine, Trying to save your soul, it just it's ridiculous. There's so many people in this world trying to make excuses for drinking. If it's for municipal purposes and it has to be done by some doctor or something, I could understand that. Otherwise, the answer is absolutely no. No, no. Don't Weaken your, your defenses. Don't weaken your own soul. Don't put yourself in a position where the devil can beat you. I cannot imagine anybody step into the ring wanting to fight a trained fighter, and I'm describing somebody here, and be drunk. You're fixing to get the tar beat out of you. If you go against the worst fighter I know on earth, the devil himself, and he's after your soul, and you're drunk, you're whipped. There's no doubt about it. You may have more uh, boldness, but you're whipped. Matthew 18, 6, last verse of the night. But whoso shall cause, listen, back to the influence. If you won't do it for yourself, tell your friends that drink. If you won't do it for yourself, look at your children, look at your spouse, look at your brothers and sisters, look at all the people that know you, and look at the Christians that you know that you're influencing. And you listen to this verse. But whoso shall cause one of these little ones that believe on me to stumble, and a drunk would make me stumble, especially if I cared for him, it is profitable for him that a great millstone should be hanged about his neck, and that he should be sunk in the depth of the sea. You'd be a lot better off. Because you make one of these little children stumble, do you know what's worse than anything that I can put on these strings? An eternity in flames. Well, I don't get drunk and I, well, you know what? You use that for excuse long enough. Your influence is hurting people. Stop it. Never preached that here before. But there's all kinds of things that we can invite on our own selves that will make other people stumble and make ourselves weak. <clears throat> it's not just alcohol, but it is alcohol and it's many other things. And again, back to the tree of knowledge, we all know what's right and wrong. <coughs> Every one of us do, and our friends do too. Brothers and sisters, if you have a need, come forward as we stand and sing. Will you come, will you come, will you